do you wish to change the background image of your HTML page so here's the video that explains it all so all you need to do is to carefully observe this video till the end hello and welcome to another new episode of learning simplified in this tutorial we are going to discuss about how to insert a background image into your HTML document. As we have seen in our previous tutorials, we will be first needing a complete new project to show this tutorial to you. So what we need to do, first of all, create the root folder of your project. All you have to do, you have to create a new folder. Now name it as advanced advanced CSS tutorial test project now this will be the root folder of yours let's bring it over here this is the root folder of yours so everything related to this project will be organized into this folder double click on it create another folder which should be known as CSS and then all you have to do create another folder which should be known as images or you may name it as image so this time what we are doing we are just creating a new folder which is known as image folder that means we are intending to keep all our images inside this folder and now just right click on it and open it with atom now what we have to do we have to create some new files such as this one index.html and inside this CSS folder, we need to create another new file which will be known as stylesheet.css. Now these two files are created over here. Now just uh, come down and copy these two things into here. I'm just copying these two things into this uh, CSS document. This is the care set UTF-8 that will define the character set that has been uh, used by the style sheet element and this is and it this line it indicates that the created document uh, that the created document will be a cascading style sheet in nature now all we need to do we need to get back to index.html and then create the basic structure of html all these things are very basic you have done this sort of things so all we did here we just created the basic structure of our html document now we have to link this style sheet to this index.html so all we need here to provide this element <coughs> now whether our style sheet is connected to this index.html the only way to uh, learn about it is to getting back to your style sheet and you just create a background HTML background color over here but first of all all we are intending to do we need to define an universal selector first and then we need to set the default value as now get back to HTML Now provide a background color over here. Let's suppose we are providing a background color of black, which is not, which is of course not the default value of HTML page document. Now all we have to do, we have to open this project. So here we see that the stylesheet.css is now linked with this uh, index.html. Now, as it has been linked with this index.html the style sheet element is now linked to this index.html this time we are about to change the background color of our uh, html document but keep in mind that what we are trying to do we are practically trying to create this particular template over here so that is why we are bringing on this background over here so all we need to do we need to copy this image first into its proper position so all i'm doing i'm just copying these two images from here and then I'm getting back to our root folder and inside this image folder we are just placing this two images that we have so far 
copied. This is the BG version .png. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Now, all we need to do, we need to get back to our project to stylesheet.css, and we are going to remove this background. We don't need this background, else we will be defining it as background image. So all we will be needing, we will be needing the image first. So we need to mention this URL. Now just set up the relative path and in doing so, rename it first and then copy this. Rename this and then copy this folder name. So we have copied this folder name and we have pasted it over here. And then we'll be needing to copy the file name, the original file name along with its extension. So all we need to do, we need to get back to our project. And first of all, we are copying the name of this small image.png, this one. So first of all, rename it. Uh, of course, copy the name. Get back over here, press Ctrl V to paste. Uh, another thing we need to get here what was the extension name the extension was png so all we need to do we need to copy this whole thing get back over here and paste it over here now if we just come back to our page and reload and if we see nothing then don't then do not get panicked what you are doing actually you are linking an image which is external to stylesheet.css and residing into a different folder so all you need to do you need to provide these two dots followed by a hashtag followed by a slash sorry press ctrl s get back to your project and reload and now you see that this image is back into its position so what you are doing actually here this is practically uh, the image folder where you have uh, placed your images and CSS is the folder where you have placed your style sheet. So into this uh, into this file, this command is coming, which is residing outside this CSS folder, but inside your main root folder. So all you need to do, you need to provide these two dots first, and then you need to provide this slash. That's it. So all you need to do, you need to get back and reload, and you see that this is actually a tile formation. And that is why we were actually using the smaller version to let you know about this style formation, this uh, nature of uh, this default nature of our HTML document. So if you do not wish to have any uh, repetition of this image, that means these images won't be repeated again. So what you need to do, you need to get back here and say and mention properly this time that the background repeat will be none. No repeat will occur over here. So just press Ctrl S, get back to your web page and reload and you will see that the image is practically non-repeating in nature. This image is not being repeated anymore. It comes once and all. Now if you want to place your image into a proper position, something like this one. If you want to specify the proper position of your image, then all you need to do background position top and you reload and you see that the image is coming that the image is coming once and in the central position but the image is showing its full feature so if you just remove this top command from top to center press ctrl s get back to your project and reload and you see that this image is now being uh, viewed from its central position till the bottom end now if you again change this background position to bottom, now you see that this image is now practically being invisible. This is not actually invisible, this is lying somewhere over here, but as you have instructed your HTML code to generate the view uh, of the image from the bottom, that is why it is just showing a very light, tiny, thin little part from the bottom and nothing else. And that is why you are not getting any proper display. So all you need to do, you need to get here and uh, instruct is as a top. Now just press Ctrl S and reload and you see that now this image is being observed over here. Now the question is, if you want 
that this background image is covering this whole HTML document. That means a single image will be covering this whole HTML document. There won't be any tile presentation of the images. That means this image won't be repetitive in nature. And this image will cover the whole HTML document irrespective of the media with you are using. So what will we do? Just get back over here. Now all you need to do, you need to specify the background size. So if you choose this cover option, get back to your project, reload. Now you see that the image is now covering the whole HTML document irrespective of the media view. This image will be shown with its full feature and it will practically cover up the whole background content. But remember that this is not a practical case in every case. You see that in this case where the resolution of this preview is 320 by 480, there we can see that this image is now being reinserted over here, resized, fitting itself into the HTML document. And the same thing happens if you just uh, rotate this dimension, rotate this viewport and you see that this thing will come out. So this will happen but we see that this image is a little bit of hazy. That, that is because we have chosen a very small image which is at a dimension of Let's open this document. Now if you bring your image over here, just bring that image into your document. See the properties. We can see, if we, if we see, if we look into the properties, we can see that this is the width which is 500 pixels and this is the height which is 250 pixels. So that is why your image is observed here with a shady or hazy display. So all we need to do, we need to change this display. That is why we need a bigger resolution, bigger dimension image over here. And that is why we will be requiring this big version PNG. And what we are doing, we are just uh, pressing F2 or rename. And then we are just copying this file name. And then we are getting back to our uh, stylesheet.css and here what we are doing, we are just changing this file name, press Ctrl S, get back to your project, reload. And we see that this time this image is getting prominent, this image is getting clearer. So that is why we will be needing a bigger image for this project and this is the background as we can see in our template. Uh, let's see, let's have a look to our template, into our template. Here's the template. So this is the background image of our project, of our newly formed project. So we can see now that the background is in position. Now another thing. Perhaps I have mentioned in a couple of my tutorials previously that uh, the more you code, the more you uh, have possibilities to generate errors. So that is why what we are doing over here, we are just copying this thing. Copy this thing over here and we are trimming our code into just one single line which is but remember all you have to do practically you have to separate this command background size which will be required in the second line which will be coming in the second line and all we are doing here we are just entering this syntax over here press ctrl s get back to your project and reload and you see that the same image is being represented over here. Now if you, what you have to do, if you just uh, zoom out then press Ctrl minus, just look over here, it is now 90%, 80%, 67, 50, 30, the maximum, lowest possible uh, dimension or display of this uh, browser. So we see that there is no change in the background images happening over here. Now just press Ctrl 0 to fit this document into the window. You see that it is now gone. Get back to your project. But how will you learn that whether this has been proper in position or not? So that is why we will be needing to create another class over here with a separate selector name. We will be creating this new class which is so all we need to do we need to get back to our project index.html and we have to call this div call this selector name inside this div and that is 
the out wrapper so first of all just create the div inside and uh, then call this class into it which is the out wrapper now you get back to your project and reload and you will see that this out wrapper class or selector name is appearing into your browser now if you press ctrl minus that means if you zoom out now you will see it is actually getting a, a minimized view, a vision a minimized view and it is at its 30 percent but the background image is still in its position and, and is covering this whole html background press ctrl zero to resize so this is the end of this tutorial in the next tutorial we are going to learn more about this thing a couple of things about this couple of things about this thing uh, in an effort to create this upper part like this one this logo and this font which is actually been uh, generated off the internet and then downloaded over here so we will be now uh, refreshing our memories and we will be learning another good tutorial about how to generate web embedded fonts of the internet and we will be knowing about the position and the z index value of course if you look observe carefully you will observe that this logo practically is coming over this this uh, rosario flower shop ta tagline that means this image has been deviated from its original position has been shifted towards right and then it is coming over this uh, tagline that means the z index value has been in action so we will be now knowing about the position that means the relative absolute or static or fixed positions and then we will be knowing about this uh, uh, how to implement that thing into our project and then we will be know about this how to uh, generate this web embedment fonts into your HTML document. So that's it for today's tutorial. Hope to see you in the next class. Till then, bye.